Amen. Glory to God. Make Amen. sure you play this on your website. Amen. Tony Harvin. Make sure you play this. Are you listening? In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11 and at verse 33. Ecclesiasticus, or the book of Sarah, chapter, chapter 11, verse 3. Begin at verse 1. At verse 33. All right, uh, begin at verse 33. Take heed chapter of Chapter 11 and verse 33. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11 and verse 33. Begin at verse 30. At verse 30. All right. Like as a partridge taken and kept in a cage. Yes. So is the heart of the prayer. Yes. And like as a spy... Watcheth he for thy fall. All right. For he lieth in wait and turneth good into evil. He lieth in and wait. wait and turneth good into evil. He turned evil. good into evil. And in things worthy praise in will lay blame upon worthy thee. Worthy praise is what? Will lay blame upon thee. Lay blame upon thee. Of a spark of fire, a heap of coals is kindled. Yes. And a sinful man layeth wait for blood. Uh -huh. At verse 33. All right. Take heed of a mischievous man, for he worketh wait. Hold it. Amen. All right, you shouting sisters, just cool down a little bit now. Take heed. Just hold it down now. <laughs> That's right. I want to talk to you. Hold it, hold it down. Listen good. Listen, take, pay attention. That's right. The Holy take, Book says. Take heed of a mischievous man. Don't go looking outside in the world. That's right. Everything that shine ain't gold. No. You got mischievous men that come right to church. That's right. Don't you forget Judas was hanging with Jesus. That's right. He was hanging around that. Around. And this is the problem with a lot of preachers. They always preach the devil from outdoors. As if he's always hanging around outside. That's right. Most of the devils that be on the inside be right up in the pulpit. That's right. That's right. The Holy Book says. Take heed of a mischievous man. Pay attention yes. of a mischievous man. Man. For he worketh wickedness. He let, work wicked. Lest he bring upon thee a perpetual blot. Lest he bring upon you a perpetual blot, meaning he will toss you into shame. That's right. He will embarrass you. That's right. Do I hate the day you ever wrote his phone number? Yes. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Receive a stranger into thine house, and he will disturb thee. And Hold it. Amen. Let me enlarge on that. Yes, Pastor Jennings, I don't let strangers in my house. You sure? Please don't narrow house to where your address is. Yeah. Look at your house as your body. Your body. The word of God say this earthly house of this tabernacle that'll be it'll dissolve. That's right. We have another not made with hand, but eternal in the heavens. That's right. So have have you ever allowed a stranger mm. in your house? Into that. Into the Pastor Jennings, I, I don't know what you mean. Have you ever opened your door? Right. And invited a stranger. Someone you don't know. Because they come to church, that don't mean you know them. No. You know, you can be around someone 40 years and still don't know them. That's why some folks say, you know, I want a relationship where there's never no disagreements. Even cartoons fight. That's right. So what you asking for ain't going to happen. That's right. Let me give you wisdom. You were coming up in the hood, we had a saying, I got your back. The true test of having your back is not when it's peace. That's right. It's when there's a conflict. Now, if there's more than one person, the person either say they got your back, is going to have your back, or you're going to see his back running down the street. Amen. Amen. So when I came up and said, yo, we got your back. Oh, man. Let's mix it up. So when I look to my side, my rollie is right there. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And right. then there was some, you know. <laughs> I saw his back, I saw the heels of his feet, yeah. everything, everything. gone. Yeah. <laughs> Friction manifests what is internally suppressed. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Friction manifests what's internally suppressed because friction brings heat. Yeah. Argument. Heat. 
And sometimes what's in her heart or in his heart, it takes heat or an argument to say what he really think of you. That's right. That's right. Or what she really think of you. You may say, you make me want to go back to my, own, to my, my old boyfriend. Really? Yeah. He make you? Did your boyfriend just pop up in your mind then? That's right. Or were you not thinking about the jolly green giant for a while? Amen. My Lord. Relationship. Doesn't matter how heated you get, sister. Never compare your husband to someone you used to deal with. That's right. Brother, never compare your wife with someone you used to deal with. Yeah. 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 And then gonna say, trust you? Yeah. I'm a work. Are you listening? Amen. Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind me. But for you to forget them, you got to be detached from them. Right. That's right. You can't forget what you're not detached from. I know the Bible said forgetting, but it don't mean just, oh, I'm absent-minded. No, you remember. Yeah. But you can remember the past, but you have overcame the past right. and your thought of the past have no effect on you in the present That's right. because you overcame it you overcame it mentally until it don't dwell on your mind and cause a, a depression you right. overcame it emotionally it doesn't affect you and cause you to start a confrontation and you overcame it physically until it don't pull you to go back to where you came from That's right. are you listening? that's right so you don't want these fairy tale relationships where there's no, no disagreement? No. Arguments has its place. Because it shows where your relationship really is and where it's on the verge of going. That's right. And it also will tell you, in many cases, the real truth about whether it's even a relationship. Or a drive-by. That's right. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. What did the Holy Ghost say here? Receive a stranger into thine house, and he will disturb thee. And that's what happened to a lot of women and a lot of men. You looked at she was baptized and had the Holy Ghost. You looked at he was baptized and said he had the Holy Ghost. But you didn't wait to know him. What is the true knowledge of a person? True knowledge of that individual is when you know the heart, the heart. of that man or that woman. Because the heart never lies. It doesn't matter what facade you see every day. That's not the real person. The real person is the unseen. Right. The heart is the only part of the body that always tells the truth. Yes. That's I right. don't care who they are or what they are. That's right. Because where the heart is, is where the real thoughts real and the thoughts real emotion is. Be it love or hate. Yeah. You can marry your enemy. That's right. But your enemy camouflage him or herself as your best friend. Yeah. And if you don't wait and take your time, you think you're marrying your soulmate. Before right. you declare them to be your soulmate, don't you think you should know what your soul is? Yeah. You can marry your enemy. Yes. You can be marrying your destruction. Though he humble himself. Though he humble himself. And go crouching. And go crouching. Yet take good heed and beware of him. You better pay attention and beware of him. And then shalt thou be unto him. And then shalt thou be unto him. As if thou hadst wiped a looking glass. And what? And thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, and that was at verse His rust and that have his rust not been altogether wiped away. Wiped away. Rust is what 
deteriorates that machinery or that metal, right. that car That's right. is not all together wiped away. Wiped away. So sometimes when they fix a car, if they don't get all the rust yeah. and remove it, yeah. repair, if they leave some there, what they leave, they're going to start eating up the rest. That's right. So what baggage is he or she bringing to the table? Mm-hmm. Covered rust. Never Some did. rust is painted over. That's right. But in due time, even rust bleeds That's through right. the paint. Yeah. My job as a teacher is to get you to see the rust through the paint. That's right. And to do that, you can't allow yourself to get so emotionally blind by the paint color. That's right. That's right. Now, this is the mistake that some brothers and sisters make. Well, Pastor Dennis, he is not what I want, but I'm just going to settle. You's a fool. That's a fool. Pastor Dennis, she ain't really what I want, but... What I want ain't out there. You mean to tell me you think that little of yourself? That you will settle for what you really don't want? Most people have been told in life, marry who you want. What we teach, you should have the who and the what. That's right. Because you can have who you want, but they ain't what you want. And you can have what you want, but it ain't from who you want. That's right. That's right. So don't you think you should have the who and the what? And the what. When you have the who and the what, you got a total package. If you got who, but what you want lives somewhere else. And because they're too far, you just settle for who. But your what is in another state. That's right. That's right. So now you got what you want, but who you want is in the north. And what you want, you married in the South because he was closer. (laughs) That's right. And either way, you're not going to be happy. Because you're going to lay with who and think about what. Mm. Are you listening? Or you're going to lay with what? And your mind going to be on who? Are you listening to the old man? That's right. That's so right. how much do you value yourself? How much do you love yourself that you will insult your own integrity? Not marry, interested in someone, and yet you're saying, man, they, they're not really what I want. Yeah. You know? I'm getting older. You mean to tell me you're that desperate for marriage? You counting the clock and you going to settle and punch out? Punch out. And you still ain't satisfied? That's right. Buy him your wedding gown, got your hope chest. He's getting this tux and no down within. He don't want her. He don't want her. She got the build. She got the shape. She's curvaceous. She's curvaceous. Are you listening? Amen. So she got the curve. She got the height. She got the feminine character, which is very rare in women today. Oh, man. You see, most men don't know nothing about femininity. Right. Most women, most men be looking at, oh, man, she, she's built, brother. She's put together. Like she's been stacked in a warehouse somewhere. <laughs> no femininity, not feminine, nothing. Nothing. And most men don't look for that. All right. She is what? But internally, she lacked the who. Yeah. So what good is having that beautiful package? And it's an embarrassment. Sister, what good is having that beautiful looking exterior package? That's right. And he's not a man. That's right. He's weak in being responsible, incompetent in being responsible. Yeah. Unstable as water. As water. 49th chapter of the book of Genesis, Genesis. quick. Yes. 
Given the 49th chapter of the book of Genesis, Jacob was about to die, and he called his sons together. Yeah. He examined Reuben, Issachar, Dan, Levi, Simeon, and Benjamin, and Joseph, and all the sons. Yes. But look at what he said about his firstborn son. Uh, in the book of Genesis, chapter 49, and verse 3. Parliament. Reuben, thou art my firstborn. Reuben? You're my firstborn. My might. You're my might. And the beginning of you my strength. You are the beginning of my strength. The excellency the of dignity. The excellency of dignity. And the excellency of power. He complimented his firstborn. He complimented his eldest son. Yes. But then there was a problem. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. He was unstable as what? Unstable as water. And what happened? Thou shalt not excel. If a brother is unstable, unstable. brother, 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 Brother. All right. you suppose to be the seer of your house. Yeah. You're the one that's supposed to have a vision for your family. That's right. If you marry a woman who loves to get things accomplished, yeah. love to go, as old folks say, forward. That's right. Love to go forward, love to excel, but yet you are content with barely making it. Barely. Let me make a brutal, raw example. There are some that got the money to pay their bills, but out of habit, they won't pay them. <laughs> they just pay on them. That's right. They lay away their bills. Yeah. Just pay on them. They got the money to pay them. But then you marry someone who's used to paying that bill. Get it out the way. If the money is there, let's take care of that first. That's right. See, if you're going to marry someone who don't have structure, you can't go into marriage with a childlike mentality. Amen. If you go into marriage, with a childlike mentality, you are mentally and emotionally unequipped That's right. to marry because now the family will perish as a cause of lack of vision. Yeah. Let me make an example. If you've got a two-bedroom apartment, two-bedroom apartment, and you got 30 kids, <laughs> and you can Afford a house, you can, but you're content with just being there. You're content with things the way they are. Your wife shouldn't have to put fire up under you and say, look, 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 we, we need to get out of here. That's right. And he's saying, well, I know, but what's wrong with this? Yep. And she's like, what do you mean? <laughs> we have no room. He said, well, I got enough room. <laughs> That's right. But you didn't marry yourself. Right. So when you say, I this, I that, I the other, when you get married, you can't look at it solo no more. Yeah. And this is where many are unprepared for marriage. Brothers that are single who got a mind to get married, you can't keep buying suits. That's right. Shoes. That's right. And you got a mind to marry, you got to lay something aside to prepare a place for her. Yeah. That where you are, she may be one day. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 4. Proverbs 20 and 4 says, The sluggard will not plow. Wait, 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 wait. Read it plain. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 4. Says what? The sluggard. The sluggard, the lazy. Will not The bum. That's right. That's right. Sluggard. Mm -hmm. If you didn't understand what the slugger is, the bum. <laughs> Amen. The bum I said. The sluggard. If you don't understand what slugger is, I know you know what a bum is. Amen. The bum will not plow. Will not work. By reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. Man, when you take care of family, you got to work all year round. Yeah. A man that's a real, there ain't no man feel like working all the time. No way. But the love that he had for his house makes him do it. That's right. Amen. That's right. Sister, you mean to tell me you want to marry a man and all he want to do is have sex? 
Yeah. No food coming to the house. Children got to argue with them about taking. Even the children got to argue with them about taking care of them. Yeah. And he's satisfied being a bum. That's right. A bum is bad. A content bum. When you are a content bum, That's right. that means you are content. You're satisfied in your study of bumology. That's right. You're a bumologist. That's right. Somebody said, what work you do? Well, I took several courses in bumology. Bumology. And uh, I, I'm a bumologist. That's right. Everywhere I go, I bum. I'm a bum. A bum. That's right. And there are some people like that. A slowful man. Oh, listen here in the book of Proverbs. Now in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 24. And sister, don't be the type of woman that disgrace yourself and use a man because he do have money. Mm. You just as bad too. Just as bad. You know, I counsel with hundreds. Amen. In today's generation that got in mind to get married, very few bring up the subject of love. It's sad when I got to bring it up. What you hear is money. That's right. I want to I wanna marry a man and make this amount a year, that amount a year, that amount a year. All right, that's well and good. Brothers, consider this. If a sister is already independent, she working, got a good job, career, she's self-established. And this is something that a lot of the so-called apostolic churches don't teach. They do not encourage their sisters or women to get an education. That's Listen, right. let me give you some brutal news, but yet it's true. Years ago, many of the old-time so-called apostolics taught sisters you couldn't be doctors, you couldn't be nurses, you could not be engineers, you could not be lawyers, you couldn't, if you get a job, Secretary or maid, right. waitress, and that's it. In fact, one bishop taught that education was equal to idolatry. Wow. Now, to all of my young sisters that's not married, stop waiting for a man to do for you what you can do for yourself. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. I mean, if you run up on a man and, he, and it's rare today. Oh, yeah. And he's a knight in shiny armor. And it's real armor. Real armor. <laughs> real armor, not plastic. That's right. Now he got a bunch of, <laughs> now he got a bunch of boxes to tape them together. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? A man that has that old foundation where he loved his family. He work and take care of his family. That's good. It is rare. <laughs> but you don't sit around when you got your hands and your mind and you refuse to sharpen your skill. And you young? That's right. What's going to happen? Bose, the knight in shiny armor, rust set in his armor. That's right. Or he leave you with five kids, and Sister Susan come by with no kids, and her hips swing him out your arm. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Remember what I said earlier? She may walk on her hands. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you want to go to college, in today's society, the availability is easy. Even if you got kids, you can take courses online. That's right. But you don't take your God-given skill and suppress it. So the so-called apostolics taught it was a sin 
to be educated. How, how old is my brother? 79. 79. Man, you 79? Mm. <laughs> he don't look it. Now, he came from under Bishop R.C. Lawson. Bishop R.C. Lawson was Bishop S.C. Johnson's bishop. Bishop R.C. Lawson was the one that ordained Bishop Johnson and made him a bishop and overseer of the state of Pennsylvania. Johnson left, left Lawson in 1930. Uh, but right. here's an old schooler who came from that's under right. Lawson. Now, Lawson died in 61, five months after Bishop Johnson. Johnson died February. Lawson died, I believe it was July the same year. But many of them old-time apostolics did not believe that a woman should be educated. Yes. Mm. Yes. And many of our young sisters in their teens, in their 20s, in their 30s, wanted to broaden their mind and simply learn. Hallelujah. Now, how can you say it's a sin for a woman to have education, but not a sin for a man to have right. education, right. and then preach that God have no respect to person. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 right. Now, brothers, what kind of man are you My Lord. that you would not want your wife to be educated? That's right. In some cases, the woman can handle the money better than you. Yeah. It don't take away from your manhood. That's right. If you don't know how to manage the bills and she do, let her. Yeah. If she know business better than you, then listen to her. Right. It don't take from your manhood. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. So why you wouldn't want your wife to have knowledge? We encourage our young sisters in their teens and 20s. This is what I used to do before I met most of you. God willing, I'm going to go back to it. When the young folk would be in school, elementary, middle school, high school, and college. They had to bring their report cards here. That's right. My Lord, my Lord. That's right. And we read them before really? the entire congregation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And if you failed, I ain't wait for your mama and father to ground you. Uh -uh. I ground you. Amen. And encourage your parents to stand behind my decision. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. You can't bring home a bunch of Fs and say that's for favoritism. <laughs> no. Really? I need to go back to that, don't I, Jones? Don't be afraid of self-improvement and self-development. You ought to thank God right. you got a leader that's pushing you pushing to you. make something out of yourself. Wonderful, wonderful. You apostolic that taught women it's a sin to be educated? You're liars, liar. yeah. including your bishops and your so-called apostles. Amen. I have hundreds of secretaries. You better be educated. Educated. Amen. That's right. When I want to see them books, I don't want to see tic-tac-toe. And here I got an accounting firm yeah. that have to evaluate the books of the entire organization. Right. Even though I have accountants and all of that within, law says it's a conflict of interest. So to tweak our books, I have to go outside of the church. Right. That's right. That's right. I have to go outside the church because by law. By law. We cannot have someone to over or to tweak our books and all. No, no, no. We have to get a, a firm, an accounting firm, yeah. an audit outside. Yeah. 
to look at every penny. That's right. And when I tell the secretaries, all right, your report got to be in by April 5th, that I expect for all the financial secretaries in America, I don't care if it's 1,000 of them, to be on time to have that report in. Why? The law of God says obey magistrates. 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 That's right. So true. And the church got to have accountability. So I encourage my brothers and sisters. Sometimes they come to me, what do you think is a good career to get in, Pastor Jennings? And I always tell them, get in something that's always in demand, that don't violate the scriptures and see how you can help the church with it. And that's make right. sure you get into something that's not, you're barely making it, but you can make it. Yeah. Are you listening? Amen. Tony Harvin. He loved this program. Thank God. He, he fills this program up on his website and points the people to the truth of God.